Today we're going to take a look at using animation to create some paths to simulate a wire routing procedure. First I'm going to drop a geometry primitive in the cylinder hole. And I'm using this just because it'll align easier and quicker. I'm not too concerned about being exact. I'm just going to drop it in one of the holes and then make some copies of it. So now I've duplicated some copies and to show you how I do that I'm going to use geometry copy and then it makes a duplicate. I'll use liner axis to liner axis to take that duplicate and drop it in the new hole. Should probably set the neutral position at this time too. And rename your wires. Just for organizational purposes. I want to name this wire 1, wire 2, etc. And then we're going to take these and drop them into a new assembly group, again for organizational purposes only. It doesn't affect the procedure. So now I'll take my wires, drop them in the new assembly group, and then I can start animating. So I'm going to move my timeline to two seconds here, take one of the wires and use my liner axis tool again to drop it in the new hole. And you can see I have a nice straight line from point A to point B. So we're going to switch that instead of being linear in the animation mode to custom, which will give us these extra handles so we can move the path and change the shape of the path around. We can tweak to our heart's content this way, but I'm just going to drop these up here for now, get them somewhat somewhat aligned, and then you can see the, the wire kind of goes from one point A to point B in a, in a little bit of an arc. Now I can, at time zero, I'm going to take that and create an associated path from the animation. And you can see this makes a, by default, a little dash line. But I can select the path and change its properties. In this case, I'll make it solid and maybe a red. And actually, I should have done that at time zero, so I'm just going to drop the cursor back to time zero and kick up the width. So now I've got kind of a line that's going to simulate a wire going from point A to point B. I can do that for the rest of the objects. And I've also created a style so every wire I create will have that style. In this case, I'm going to add a third point because I, I want to add a little bit more control. You want to use as few points as possible, but again, I'm moving the, the timeline out putting that object in position. And in this case, I actually did not set my initial key at 10 seconds. So when I scroll back, you'll notice that at 10 seconds, it's not back in its original position. So I can fix this by just using the restore neutral position. That's why it's a good, good idea to create a neutral position for those objects at the beginning. So now from 10 to 12, it moves along that path. And I'm going to again change that to custom. But I want might want a little bit more control here. So I'm going to add a path, uh, another point in the center. So we'll just move the timeline out. Create that associated path. Maybe somewhere in the middle here, I want to add another point. I can just move the timeline and add a location key. You see it adds another point with some extra splines handles on it. Now you want to always try and keep the splines as tangent as possible so that it creates a nice smooth line. You can see right now I have a little kink here, but if I pull that out, it helps increase the arc. Now if we 
display that. I've got a, a better curve in my line. Because I didn't want to see my initial wire objects, if I hide them, I no longer see the path. But I can use the trick and taking the objects and take, turning their opacity way down so you don't really see the objects, but the path will still be there. So there you have it, simulating wire routing using animation path.